oil field wastewater going to uh, for agricultural irrigation uh, just to the north of here. So this is the water that Chevron brags about how they are contributing to agriculture in the area. Uh, this is pure wastewater here. This this is not this has not been diluted. Uh, on a cooler day, you see this you'll see steam coming off of this water right here. Uh, I've been here when it really smells. Okay, this water's been pumped up with crude oil. So for about every gallon of crude oil, the oil they've pumped up about 10 gallons of this uh, wastewater. So uh, they have to separate the wastewater and then dispose of it somehow. It's a it's a painful process for them if they can't just put it into an open percolation pond. It was built specially to deliver this wastewater. A couple miles north of us here, they start mixing fresh water with it. And then so, it starts going into pipelines and big reservoirs. The oil company gets to brag about it, how they're helping the local ag industry with water, especially in time of drought. They've been bragging this year. They've, they've been putting full page ads in the local newspaper of how ag is working with the oil industry and vice versa. You know, uh, it, it's good publicity for the oil industry. We got a drought going on right now and there are farmers in this one irrigation district who are willing to take this water if it's diluted. So they'll dilute it five to ten times with fresh water that's pumped out of the ground. And so they're increasing their water supply by five to ten percent. And they act happy to take it. There's a, in the intersection of Highway 99 going south and Famoso Road, which is only about 15 miles from here from Delano, there's this place where you are able to see three canals. Uh, one is coming from the west, uh, from the east, I'm sorry. The other one is coming south, and then they merge on one single canal that comes up north. The water that comes from the east side, uh, it's what the oil industry calls produce water. Uh, we, <laughs> in the environmental justice movement, we know it as contaminated water. It comes to meet this other canal that is coming south that has clean, fresh water. They mix them, they dilute that water, then it goes into this other canal that is going now north, and that water is being sold to farmers. And community members and people from all over the United States are eating almonds, grapes, oranges, walnuts, pistachios that, are, that have been irrigated with that water. Did you just say that we have canals where we're moving our produced water through a canal? Did you just say that? Yes, I said that. And, and, and then inside of me, I'm thinking, well, explain to me produced water, and you're going to find out that it's contaminated water, right? And they're saying, well, it's produced water that has gone to, to some cleaning, purifying methods. Then it's been diluted with clean water. That is not true. That is not true. That's produced water that is completely contaminated, but... God only knows what sort of chemicals. Then the purification method is just mixing it with this clean, fresh water. Uh, it, it is sad, uh, it, and it's unbelievable that we are doing this. I mean, this here we are, 2015, and it seems like we're doing the same old practices that we used to do early in the 1900s. When we claimed that our excuse was we don't have the science to do any, any of this. Now, I'm assuming that the argument that, that the oil industry has to come is, uh, I don't have the will to do anything to protect people. They have the science, they got the money, they don't have the will. Let's blend it in and say, well, for short term, we gotta keep everything growing, gotta keep everything alive, so we're gonna use this water. It's, it's short term thinking. Short-term gain and long-term pain, you know, that's, that, that happens in so many places.